Kia ora. Follow along as I make a contacted test board for the boys to practice on. Just going to draw effectively what's going to end up on this board. So on the top set of contactors we're going to have a stop button, start button, just the auxiliary. We'll then go to an overload which if you remember from last video is also a stop button it's normally closed and then it will go to the coil that we put on this one and this first one is going to be the 24 volt coil so then that there will end up going back to the negative of the 24 and this start here go up to the switchboard and that will be the positive of the 24 volt. I'm just going to copy this another two times for the 230 and the 400 volt and then after that we'll draw in the changeover contact controls. Okay, so I've drawn those three standard contactors, now I'm going to draw the reversing contactor. A little bit different, um, same sort of principles. So we're going to start with the stop button. And then we will go to the overload next, because this is the last point where the overload can be common to both the forward and reverse. Now we branch off to our start buttons and if you remember from our last video start buttons are in parallel and it's the same for this so we have our start here and our auxiliary which is 13 and 14 then we have um, our next start button and our next auxiliary. Next start button and our next auxiliary. Now the, currently the way we have it is if you press this button obviously power will carry on here and it will hold in this contactor, hold in the contactor just like normal and same here. The only difference between this one and this one is this one will just have the three phases differently so that the motor goes the opposite way. After this we are going to come to the electrical interlock of the reversing contactors. So let's call this one um, start forwards and this one will be backwards. Okay, so we're going to connect it into 61 and 62 of the forward contactor. And this one here will be in 61 and 62 of the backwards contactor. The reason for that is when this contactor pulls in here it will open up this circuit. So let's say this is the forwards and we've turned forwards on so we've pressed forwards it presses this in and this is a normally closed. So when this presses in it opens it up. Because this goes through the other contactor it is still connected through here. They carry on and they go to the coil. Coil and this is the Ford's coil and it's a 230 volt coil on this contactor. This one goes to the reverse or backwards so that we can put a B and that is also a 230 volt.
contactor. They then both can go off to the neutral. Just like that. Now I'm going to start putting some of the buttons on. I've just prepped up this here. Um, this is a RCD to supply my board, um, keep us a bit more safe when we are doing our testing. And then three breakers here. I didn't put a three phase breaker in because we want to be able to simulate losing a phase for your control or for your motor. Um, to see what happens and then I've got a 6 amp here which will control the power pack for the 24 volt. Then I'll just mount these to the board also um, so that we've got easy test points and easy connection points for when somebody is having a go. So we will sling this up and it's just on a uh, 16 amp 3 phase lead so that will work pretty well. That'll sit about here I think. Got our start buttons. I just decided to use a staple to put them in the place. So just in case you're wondering, Klein make these really good hammers. Um, you can get them in blue or um, yellow and even even orange and red. So um, yeah, pick yourself up some if you haven't got any. They're really, really great tool. Okay, so I've got these here. Um, they're front facing, although they don't din mount. They mount on Snyder's special boxes and stuff and I wasn't gonna mount boxes all over this. But I've found that a cable staple just hammered down a little bit. It clips on there real nice because we still want um, to be able to look at it and see it and unwire and rewire it up easily. Um, hence why we didn't want it back mounted or anything like that or um, with buttons on the front. This way it's all a little bit easier to have a look at. Okay, so I've got most of our buttons on. I'm going to mount the contactors on next, just in this spot. Other ones will be there, um, probably permanently wire the feeds in, and then the motor I've just got sitting over there on the bench uh, will be down below. But once I've done that, it'll be pretty easy to run through it all, show you how it all works, and have a little look at the wiring. It'll be nicely laid out just like this. Um, but for those of you who asked, this is the 400 volt one. Okay, so I've just made myself a whole lot of these leads and I've put ferrules on the end, ferrule crimps. If you don't have any of those, um, you should get yourself some. Real good for little jobs like this when you're putting them into small terminals. Um, just saves a bit of hassle, keeps it nice and neat. I've made a bunch of these mainly for the fact that this is going to be a, a demonstration or a learning board so for the guys to not have to worry about twisting their cables every time they put it in and out um, I don't think I'll wire them all up in this video that's part of the training but I will make another video and I'll wire this 400 volt circuit so you can see how that works just talking through the principles of the contact, as you can see, I've wired them all up three phases, come down and they just loop onto the next contactor, down and onto the next contactor, and then into the last two contactors. So that's all the same no matter what. And then out the bottom of the contactors, it comes out and down to a chocolate block. And in this block here, I'm going to put the motor in the bottom. That's about it for the principles of how, how to wire the contactors. The control circuits are all here. So it really pays when you're doing this kind of thing um, to double check your terminations and whatnot. Um, just realised that I just put the um, live and neutral into the wrong end. Some transformers, if you do that, you will stuff them. So it always pays to double check before you liven things. 
There you go, so we are all finished for this board. The lid will go on this switchboard. Pretty much the premise of this and what I'm trying to do with some of my other videos and some of the things I'm going to do for the guys at work is um, creating a bit of this kind of thing that they can practically learn on. It's all very well to draw the picture, um, but it's a very different story for wiring it getting from a picture to wiring, um, fault finding, all that kind of thing, um, is very good to do practically for the guys. And sometimes you don't see a contactor for a year. Um, if you're an industrial sparker, you'll see them all the time, obviously, but in our field of work, we do deal with them, but it's not all the time. And it's definitely not all the time that they're faulty. I'll just walk you through this board and how the guys are gonna use it. So our power comes from a three-phase plug into a three-phase RCD into three separate 16 amp breakers and the reason for that is then when they are running the gear we could turn a phase off and get them to fault find what's wrong there. Um, also a six amp for um, the 24 volt controller. They both come over to these chocolate blocks just for ease. We'll have the switchboard closed up because it's not switchboard teaching, it's contactor teaching. The contactors are wired from the three phase down loop to each one, that's fine like that. And then from the bottom of the contactors into this chocolate block, which will have the motor in it. They'll then also be able to wire from these chocolate blocks from the transformer um, through their circuits and they could decide um, what circuits to go through, how many stop starts they wanted. They could go three stops and four starts or five starts and then wire it all to this contactor or this contactor. So this board's really about learning, playing around, seeing how you go from wiring diagram to practical wiring. I think all in all, this will be quite good for, especially some of the younger guys that haven't had any experience with this. Um, they can have a play with them and then when they do get to go to a job with a contactor they already have a bit of a grips as to what's going on. I'm looking forward to expanding resources like this for our guys in the workplace and also doing some more of this stuff online for you guys. And as always, follow for more from an NZ Tradie.